Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's have a look at creative timeline nesting in Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, shout out goes to Rai Ken for his question of where would you use nesting? I never use it myself, but I know other people will use it a lot. If you're an After Effects user, this is pre-composing. It's a sequence in a sequence. That's really all it is, but it does have some powerful uses. Let's go have a look. So the first place I'm going to use this is with a show opening. So let me play this for you. So you can see this is pretty complex. There's a uh, curtain opening to reveal a video in the back. And I've got a logo that I created in Illustrator. And then we have a green screen of a guy who's pushing the logo along. And then the background animation of this room emerging. All of these things together uh, with this, the music at the bottom make this show opening. If we're going to use this in multiple places, then it makes sense to use this as a nest. But let's say you didn't do it that way. Let's say you created this at the beginning of one of the shows. So let's do that first. I'll select all of this and copy it. Now I'll go to the beginning of my show and in the edit menu, you can paste insert and it's going to move everything down. So now we've got our show opening at the beginning. Show opening plays. And we're gonna to fade to black and then we'll fade up on the actual show itself. So there we go. All right, but I've got two other shows that need that same show opening. And what if that show opening had a change? And what if you had more than three? What if you had 10, 20, or 50 where you had to rely on that? This is where a nest would make sense. But like I said, let's, let's for an example, let's say that you only realize the benefits of a nest after you've created this in the beginning. No problem, watch this. Let's go into the beginning, zoom in. I'll select all of the pieces that I want to be in the nest, right click with them selected and choose nest. And I'll call this opening nest. Click okay. And you'll see that it was replaced with a sequence. And the show opening is now over in my So there's the opening nest. If I double click on this nest here, it's going to open up the nest, which really is the same as this show opening here. By the way, all the videos in this tutorial were provided by Adobe Stock, the premier supplier of stock images, video, illustrations, motion graphics, templates, and 3D objects. Find the perfect asset for your next creative project. So now we have this opening nest. And now if any changes are made, they'll ripple into any of these shows. So here's the first show. Here's the second show. Okay, when I drag this over, if I hold the control key down, it's gonna ripple insert. Command on Mac. So now each one of these has the same show opening. And then it goes to the show, show number two, show opening, goes to the show, and show one. So you think you're all well and done, and somebody comes back and says, uh, we need a change. Uh, either some of the type of the logo or design, or in our case, we're gonna change the curtain color back to the original, which was red. So I'll double click on the nest, open up the nest, and here is the, the curtains, and I've got a Lumetri effect that I added on here that I changed the color from red to blue. I've changed it back to red. Let's go to show opening one. It's red. Opening two, it's red. Three, it's red. And of course, 
they want it ch changed back to blue. Go back to show one, it's blue, two, it's blue, three, it's blue. So there's a really good compelling use of a nest. It's co uh, directly connected to each one of those. Now, if you wanted two of those, so if you, if you wanted a separate blue intro and a red intro, then just duplicate the sequence. That's no problem. Now let's go the other way. Let's say that you converted something into a nest, but then you realize, I didn't want that. I actually want to go back to all the pieces. No problem. If we make this a nest, let's go back to the show opening one, and I'm going to delete this. If you turn this button off and bring that same show opening in, now it's going to come in as all those separate pieces. So this button either creates a nest or individual clips. So we've got the best of both worlds. If you accidentally made something, you don't have to recreate it or copy and paste it back in. Turn that off and drag it in. Now, another good use for having a nest, let me just undo that and put that back, is effects. So if I wanted to add an effect to this whole show opening, I could do that. So let me go to my color settings and I'll just grab a completely different look. So we now have an effect and let's turn the intensity down on that. We've got an effect on the show opening and I didn't have to create that effect and add it to each one of the little bits. That's useful. How about speeding something up? Let's go back over to editing. And if I wanted this to be faster, then I'm going to grab my rate stretch tool, go to the tail of this clip and drag this over. Now we've got this faster. And of course we could go really fast and, and you'd have to take into account with the music too. And you'd have to ripple trim the rest of these uh, clips. Another good use for a nest, let me put that back. Let me take the show opening out of each one of these. And I'm going to take show number one two and three and make a new sequence and I'll drag in the show opening and ripple that down. So now we have all three shows with one show opening, all three shows as nests. This is useful if you have a master output to a bunch of other sequences. Anything that changes in the sequence, the nested sequence is going to change in this master sequence with one exception, and that's duration. There's no way to change this, so please don't ask how to change this. Adobe has made it so that if you change the duration of the nest, it won't update where the nest is placed. And that's probably a good reason because if it was ripple changing everything else, you could really make a mess of your whole sequence. So let's go and do that. Let's go to show number two. And I'm going to take these clips out and we'll change the duration of show number two. So let's go to, and what, what did, So our master, the master has taken the name of the first one, so it's called show one. So let me name that so it's a little bit easier for us to understand. So now we're in the master, and you can see something odd down here. You can see these diagonal lines. That's an indication that your, your, there's a difference in the duration. Instead of removing that amount and making everything ripple delete, um, Adobe just gives you that indication. You can't change this. Uh, that's the way it is. So 
you have to ripple delete this, but there's no way to tell in frame accuracy where that is without manually dragging it back. So here's what I'll do. I'll move my cursor to the end and trim this, and I'll trim it past the diagonal lines, and then I'll trim it back to the lines. Now it's ending. Now I can click in here and delete. That's the only way to do this. You can't really find where that is. Uh, you have to move it back. If we go back to show number two and we change that duration again, and we go back to the master, there's no way to see that. You have to manually drag that down and then drag that out. So it's powerful in that all the nests will update wherever they go and you can have a nest and a nest and a nest and a nest. The durations do not change, so there's no way to get around that. But I hope that you can see that there are some really interesting ways to, to work with this. And Rai, I hope this answers your uh, question on well, where would you use this? You can also use this if you have a track mat, and I've got a, a full tutorial on track mats. If you had a really complex track mat, the track mat itself could be a nest. You can use it for warp stabilization. There's lots of places that you can use nests in Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, if you're new to video reveal and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. If you want to support us some more, like our wonderful supporters on PayPal, you can do that in there's a link in the description in the front of the channel. Thank you so much to everyone that supports us, either monthly or a one-time donation. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to listen to your questions and answer them here on YouTube.